can we write Xamarin plugins? Hello, welcome to the Hello World Show. I'm Heather Downey. I'm Spencer Schneidenbach. And we're here with James Montemagno. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm super excited. Yes, we're very excited to have you. Um, James has been around uh, Xamarin since almost the beginning. I think you started there as a developer advocate, right? Yeah, well, as a customer first, actually. And I fell in love, so I was a, a customer writing a small startup in Seattle, writing all of their mobile applications for about two years with Xamarin. So I was a C-sharp developer. I, I worked for Canon before that, writing enterprise software. I thought mobile was going to be a thing, and guess what it was and is. And uh, yeah, I found Xamarin, fell in love with it, and then I worked for them uh, as an advocate now here at Microsoft. Nice. So what made you want to dive into, uh, I've, I've done quite a bit of mobile, so what made you stray from doing straight native and just learning both of the stacks and wanting to do this? Yeah, so it was interesting. So when I made the jump uh, to become a mobile developer, I'd only written one Windows Phone application ever. I was a C-sharp developer, and I knew I wanted to write mobile applications. But when I went to go work for the startup, I was the only mobile developer. I was the only one I was designing, implementing, testing, deploying. And they said, listen, we're literally going to this huge consumer electronics show in two months, and we need an iOS, Android, and a Windows Phone application. It's a two months go. Yeah. And uh, it was it was interesting because what happened was like I knew that I could go learn Java and I could probably learn Objective C and write brackets and stars. And my coworker told me about Mono and told me about Xamarin. And I started playing around with the technology and I was using Visual Studio, using C Sharp. And what I realized is that it was 100% native anyways. So I was still accessing all the native stuff. I wasn't losing any of that stuff, but I could share vast amounts of code across everything. So like once I used it, was like it was like proof is in the pudding, right? As soon as you when as soon as I use it, I was like, this is all I ever want to do, and I've been doing it for over six years now. Did you actually start in the Monotouch era or in the after Xamarin was a company? Yeah, so it was once Xamarin was a company, but all the products were still like kind of older Monotouch and Mono for Android stuff, and then they switched over to Xamarin Studio and all this stuff. But yeah, it was it was the early days, and uh, it, it was crazy. My Our apps were talking like WCF back then things and like databases, and you know, I originally wrote a remote DVR management, and I actually wrote an entire DVR uh, in Xamarin. And really? We, we had our own set-top box that was all like core open source Android. And I wrote the entire dashboard and streaming everything all in Xamarin. So, I mean, the, the proof was like, if I could write a DVR system in Xamarin in C Sharp and deploy that in an app store for that thing, uh, I can kind of do anything. Yeah, nice. it's cool. Awesome. We're, we're thrilled to have you. Yeah, yeah, great to have you. All right, James, what are you going to teach us today? Yeah, so today I want to talk about plugins for Xamarin, just something I'm super passionate about because it's something, a concept that I kind of created a few years ago. And I've been doing Xamarin cross-platform development for like six years at this point. So if I look at the architecture of a Xamarin application, right, I like to use boxes, and this would be my whiteboard, is you have your shared code in here. So this is just .NET code. So my models, view models, RESTful service calls. And that we have up top are like platform-specific things. And, you know, I fell in love with Xamarin because I could come in and write a native like Android app and an iOS app, a Windows app, or even a Mac app and create these heads and access 100% of the APIs. So Android has these really unique APIs with material design. So I create beautiful user interfaces for each platform, but share like 70% plus of code, right? And it's just my C Sharp .NET code. I'm using Visual Studio. I love it. So what we found though, and even myself as a developer, is that Yes, I love that I can access every single API in C Sharp on each platform, but a lot of these platforms do the same thing, right? So they have text-to-speech, geolocation, push notifications, lights, and all that stuff. So when you think about it, you're like, yes, Xamarin's amazing because I can access all these things, and I can go learn Android's text-to-speech API, and I can go write iOS's text-to-speech API, and I can go do it for Windows, I can do it for Mac, but now, if I want to access that in shared code, well, I can't because all that code, so if I put you know, text to speech up here, TTS, all that code I'm implementing one time, two times, three times, four times up here. Now that's fine because I can do it and that's what's important is I'm accessing those native features, but then I can't really access them from shared code or I have to do like an interface here, so a little interface up here to do it. So this is what I've been doing for years. And about two, two and a half years ago, we said, you know what we really need? Is we just need to create tons of NuGet packages, and we'll call them plugins, that do all of those common APIs. 
Because there are some unique things, like if you're integrating with Siri or integrating with Apple Pay or something like that, those are really unique. You're gonna write these interfaces anyways, but there's so many that are the same. If you think about Bluetooth or just Wi-Fi connectivity, all these little things. So I actually did this for the first time six years ago when I first started doing it, I created a settings plugin. I created it for myself and that was our first plugin, which now is over a half a million downloads. So what Plugins for Xamarin does, it says, listen, we already have all this code. We already have it all documented. So what if we work with the community to take all of these common APIs and put them into NuGet packages that you could just easily go, say, I need a settings plugin, I need a text plugin, a text speech plugin, and then you can access all of these native APIs from your shared code. So now, instead of having to learn the API four different times to do text to speech, you can just use one single interface. So we abstract it essentially down here into an, you know, I TTS, I text to speech, and I just say speak. Now what's happening though, if I can spell speak correctly, and I pass <laughs> in a string. So there we go, that's my beautiful handwriting. So what's cool is that this is my interface. I can access it now from my shared code, but under the hood, it's still accessing all these native features. So it's not like we figured out text-to-speech and .NET and it just magically works on an Android or iOS device. No, 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 we went and wrote the hundreds of thousands of lines of codes so you don't have to, right? So you can go to xamarin.com slash plugins and you can find this open source GitHub page where we've worked with the community where tons of Xamarin's and Microsoft employees have created them but also people in the community and the open source community are now contributing to this amazing ecosystem of plugins. So they're all open source, they're all under MIT. So now when you're actually going in and creating your first project, you're like, oh, file a new project, what do I need? Oh, I need text-to-speech, I need geolocation, I need dialogue boxes, I need uh, Bluetooth, I need uh, you know, anything like that. Settings, right? You just download a NuGet package and you're writing code instantaneously and you don't have to worry about this stuff. If you need to, guess what? They're all open source. You can go take the code and do whatever you need with it. So it's really kind of magical in a way where I can get up and running immediately and access all these great functionalities. I don't have to go learn all this other stuff until I want to. And Xamarin Forms is really even kicking that up even further and making an abstraction over all of these different platforms yeah, uh, for the UI. Yeah, so, so Xamarin Forms is our UI abstraction, which you can almost think of the same thing, right? Instead of doing native APIs, it does the native user interface and it abstracts what it can. Just like, an, just like a, a, um, a plugin for Xamarin gives you the common functionality, Xamarin Forms gives you the common user interface between all of them. So that's kind of an important thing to think about, whether you're using Xamarin Forms or even plugins. Plugins for Xamarin work with Xamarin Forms, Xamarin Native, just in Xamarin iOS, just in Android, it works anything that you want to, which is really cool about it. So what's unique there is that, yeah, there's iText to Speech, for instance, the plugin I have. And it, it'll give you like the languages you can play back, you can do strings, you can async await it if you would like to, but it's not gonna give you the crazy deep of going straight to the API. So if you're like, my entire application is all about text-to-speech, well, you, you probably actually wanna write the API, so see what I'm doing. Whereas if you're like, you know what, is when someone hits this button, I just need to say, yeah, I'm starting to navigate or I want to read back a string of text, this thing is gonna be perfect for you, so you don't have to go write those things. Yeah. So is there like a, a guidance system, I suppose, if you want to contribute to that community and write plugins yourself? Let's, because all this hardware is coming out so fast that you know sometimes um, the companies can't come out with things fast enough. But maybe you're working with it. So, for instance, I do a lot of IoT, a lot of different work with sensors and beacons and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so, if I have to implement it for at least iOS, like. Um, like, is, it, is there like a, a guidance of what makes a good plugin to share with the community? Yeah, so what's really nice is that we, uh, we created some templates to get developers like getting started really quick. So they just go file new, it'll scaffold everything out for them. You can install those in Visual Studio. Uh, we have some Xamarin University um, lightning lectures that I did, so you don't even have to be a subscriber. You can just watch this video, which describes the architecture, the best practices, like what, what goes into a plugin. And what we really recommend is that developers to get started at least support Android, iOS, and UWP because those are the three major platforms that developers are looking to get going. If you take a look at mine, my settings plugin supports Apple Watch, Apple TV, Mac OS, WPF, UW, I mean, it's Windows Phone 8, Silverlight, like all of them because it's very broad and generic and I just have grown over time. So what we find is that by starting with those base three, it gives you a good foundation 
And then people can contribute other platforms, even Tizen, for instance, now is .NET Core based, so we see people adding Tizen support to plugins. So you really think of just these amazing libraries that are abstracting all this platform specific stuff so you don't have to. So it's really cool. And it doesn't have like a helpful little chart that says, oh, this thing, you know, supports the three or four major platforms, but now it also supports Windows 8 Silverlight and there's like little handy charts there. Exactly. So <laughs> yeah, when you go to every, we worked and we standardized it, the readme too. So we said like every plugin, if you're going to become like a Xamarin plugin, what you need to have is this like little box of getting started, the NuGet, where's it at in, at Bayer or on whatever you're building it on VSTS. And then there's literally, yeah, a chart that says I support these platforms and I support these versions enough. So I support iOS 7 plus, I support you know UWP, only the creator update for some reason. You know what I mean? So you can actually go on there easily. And, and what we find is that, yeah, everyone's just loving them. There's millions of downloads of them. And we also see them even for internal enterprise, like, oh, we can't use those plugins, but we're already doing this. So we're gonna create our own personal NuGet feed of all the plugins that we're creating. So anyone coming into a new project can just bring in our own company's plugins. So we see that being used often too. Thank you so much yeah. for taking the time yeah, to thanks share a lot. with us. Absolutely, cheers. Yeah, thanks for having me. Don't forget to share this video on social media. And comment below to be entered into our weekly giveaway. Tell us what questions you have for our guests. See, see you, you next time. time.